Hey everybody, this is Jim the Tabletop Engineer and I am going to be playing League of Dungeoneers today in this new playthrough video. Finally, a dungeon crawl. Um, if you've been watching the previous videos, you know I've got my four heroes. They are ready to go. They've accepted a quest in the town of Colfell. They're supposed to go down into the basement below the um, town hall and look for a missing uh, rat catcher, I believe, or at least try to figure out why the rats are so big. Uh, what I've done is I've got a door here. The characters, my, my minis are on the starting uh, tile, and I have shuffled the exploration cards that represent the quarters and the rooms, and then the bottom one is the objective room. That will stay on the bottom which guarantees pretty much that I've got to explore most of the dungeon. The way this works is you put the deck behind a door and we're going to start turn number one and turn number one is I have to open the door. Now as an action, there are a list of actions here. Uh, opening a door is one action point. Every hero and monster gets two action points. So who do I want to open the door? Well, I think I'm going to have the halfling. The halfling rogue will open the door for one action point. I take this, I replace it with an open door, and I, I uh, reveal the card on top. Oh, interesting. It's, I thought it was going to be a quarter. It is the throne room, which is an unusual thing beneath a, uh, beneath a town hall, but whatever. All right, it has an entry quarter, so it's going to have to go like this. This is going to be very interesting. Now, the throne room says there are two doors. So I can place the second door uh, basically wherever I want. Um, so what I can do is I'm going to, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to scoot this over a little bit to give myself room to move. There we go, right there. And then I'm gonna place this door right there. We have a door. All right, so the throne room has been revealed. It says whoever has been residing here apparently decided a throne room would be appropriate, but most of the room is in ruins now. The walls cannot be passed through and do block line of sight. The weapons rack, dead adventurer, and the chest can be searched. Now before I do anything, I've revealed the room with one action point. I have to see if there's anything in this room. Now, I'm going to be going very, very slow on these first early adventures, mainly because I just, I'm new to this game and I don't know, um, I don't know what, uh, what, what's, I don't know all the rules. So, the start of the turn, uh, this is the actual start of the turn. What I was supposed to do is roll a scenario die. Now, that is a, uh, that's a D10. I roll the D10, and on a 1 to 8, I just move my heroes. On a 9 to 10, there is a possibility of a threat. I rolled a 1. So, uh, the result is a 1, which means my heroes can now move in. Um, roll on the threat page. Now, once they're in the room, I think I also have to roll to see... Uh, Opening a door, here we go. Roll a d6 and add, all right, so my starting threat level is two. On page 100, uh, there is a thing called opening a door, which I forgot to do. Roll a d6 and a d10. It says, uh, I raise the threat level one. So I'm tracking it on this little uh, laminated card here. So I'll erase it at two and move it to three. And then I roll a d10 and a d6. All right, the d10 is an 8, and the d6 is a 2. The d6 result, uh, 1 to 5, not trapped. So the door was not trapped. I, I, I don't know if the door to the dungeon has a possibility to be trapped, but we'll treat it that way. So since there's no trap, now I look at the d10. On a 7 to 10, it is locked. On a 1 to 6, it is not locked. How do you defeat it? Well, I don't have, actually, I do have some lock picks. My rogue has a set of lock picks. I bought 10 of them, I think. Let me look. The, lo the rogue has lock picks times two. So I get two 
attempts. So I can attempt to pick the lock, and to do that, I look at the rogue's pick lock chance. It's a dexterity, it's 50%. So let's put the door back. <laughs> All right, so it's a 50-50 shot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to roll uh, a blue and a black die. The blue is the first, uh, is the, is the 100th or the, the tens place. And for pick locks, it's 50%. Now, I don't know, do the, do the lock picks give you a bonus? I think you have to have a lock pick in order to pick a lock. So I don't think it actually gives you any, um, I don't think it gives you necessarily any uh, bonuses to the, um, to the, to the, uh, the check or whatever. But I'm going to, I'm going to verify that. And the way I do it is in the appendices, lock picks. Necessary to pick locks, but can also be used to disarm. Uh, yeah, so there's no, so it's a 50-50 shot. Blue is high. I rolled a 17, so I successfully picked it. And it says, uh, pick the lock. Uh, is it a chest or a door? It's a door. Place the tile, roll for encounter. Okay, so we place the door. We roll for the encounter. Now the encounter, it says a room has a 50% chance of enemies, 0, 1 to 50. All right, let's roll it. I rolled a 31, so there is an encounter. Uh, yes, prepare initiative tokens. One token per enemy, one token per hero, add tokens for perks. All right, on page, this for this quest, which is on page 222, there is a table on page 223, which you roll a D100 for the quest-specific encounter. I'm going to roll that right now. I rolled a 52, which is a bat swarm. Now, I don't have a miniature for bats, but I do, I am going to use the bat swarm standee uh, for, um, for this encounter. So, let me get the monster card for bat swarm. Got it right here. All right, now, to place the monster, I believe I roll on one of these random activation of enemy. I, I'm pretty sure that placing enemies with close combat weapons must be placed at least one square away from characters with a random placement. Uh, enemies would be placed facing the character. Okay, so I have this book here, and it's of reference, it's like a... It's just a bunch of charts that are copied from the book. And at the front, if I remember right, there is a random, randomizing squares. Okay? This room is a rectangular. It is one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, it's interesting. It's actually not one of the options here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine by six. Uh, I don't see. Um, that is interesting. Well, until I get an answer, we're going to use it. It says, to, it says I'm going to use this rectangular one here, and I'm going to start from the back. It says you roll a D4 and a D6. All right. The D4 is a 3, and the D6 is a 2. So, I come over here. Uh, the 6 is a 2, and the D4 is a 3, which is right there. Okay. So, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4... And then down, right there. So the, so the bats, I've awakened the bats. They are alert. Now the bats have a damage of 1 to 4. They have no combat skill. Their range skill is 0. Uh, auto, they auto hit. Will automatically cause 1d4 points of damage per action to all heroes adjacent. Once it has reached wound status, this reduces to 1d2. It always acts first during the first turn, regardless of tokens. Flyer moves through squares with other models, ignoring zone of, zone of control. Pyrophobia, probably that means it's afraid of torches, which my fighter is the one holding the torch. Okay, let's do this. Um, so it will act first. It will move four. Uh, one, two, three, four. Four. We'll move diagonally because there's a wall here. All right. So, well, I guess it could fly over the wall, but it looks like it's meant to be like a full wall with a doorway here. All right. It has moved. Now it is my turn. So, since it moved, I don't have to do the tokens. Uh, 
Um, well, I do, I do after the first turn. The first, the always acts first during the first turn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take four white tokens. One, two, three, four. And since it moved first, my elf is going to lose that good hearing. Uh, that would have given me a bonus. But And then I'm going to put one in for the bats. And we'll put those in the bag. And those will determine initiative. All right, my turn. Uh, my wizard will move one, two, three, four. And um, now the, the health is 10. And I do have a flare, a bright flare to the tar. Okay, I'm going to use my wizard to cast flare. Now my wizard at the start of the thing has mana of... I always forget. 87. So what I'm going to do to track that, I'm going to get some D10s. Oh, D10. Where are you? All right, I'm going to track that on my spell card. And she has 87. She's an elf wizard. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast a spell. Now, to do this, uh, there is a table in here called Cast a Spell. Uh, let's see. Combat turn, enemy attack, hero casting spells. All right, so determine the miscast threshold. Well, the miscast threshold for Flare, it doesn't have a modifier. It's going to be 95 or higher. The spell type is, it is arranged. Um, line of sight needed. Uh... I believe I do need line of sight for it, and I do have it. Um, focus. I'm not going to choose to focus. That's where you burn action points, and I've already used one action point to move. Um, so, subtract the CV from your AA. My arcane is 68. 68 minus 10, which is the arcane energy, is 58. I have a 58% chance of casting this. Um, make the skill check. 58 or lower. I rolled a 65, so it failed. She loses the 10, uh, and she's down to 77. I shouldn't use these. These are the ones for tracking. All right. Um, let's see. That is her turn. She is done. I'll just use tokens to represent it. All right. The cleric will move one, two, three, four. Uh, two, three, four, excuse me. Oh, this is not good. <laughs> um, and the cleric, the cleric does not have a ranged weapon. The cleric only has a sword. A mace, excuse me. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and have her move, or him move one, two, three. She's going to move up and engage, or he's going to move up and engage. Now he double moved, or he, he spent both action points, so he will not get to attack. My halfling spent one action to open the door, or to do the lock picking, or whatever. So, does that it, opening the door? I, that's weird. So, does uh, does it cost actions to? Unlock, I assume picking a lock is it? Pick up a no. Pick a lock is two. So she. So my my uh, halfling cannot move this turn. This turn was with her op, or him. Uh, yeah, her opening the door, unlocking, unpicking the lock. Um, picking the lock is two. So opening the door would have required one, and that would have been the wizard technically. I will say that the fighter moved through. Uh, through it, one, two, three, four, and that's all the fighter can do. He un he opened the door, he moved in, the wizard ran in, the cleric ran in, and that is it. That is the end of the turn. All right, now at the end of the turn, there are some things you have to do. Um, I was supposed to roll the scenario die, which I believe I did, didn't I? We'll do that on the next turn, sorry. Uh, there's a lot of things to track in this game. All right, so now it is the next turn. But actually, it's the end of the turn, so let's see. Adjust sanity. I did not miscast. There was no trap. Nobody's got a, a head wound, poison disease, or whatever. 
adjust the party morale. My morale is currently at 15. No characters died, none of them reached zero HP, not in combat with demons, no sprung trap, uh, large monster kill, none of that. Okay, so all that's good. Adjust the threat level. I opened the door, that was the plus one. So now it's at three. And then move the wandering monster. Okay, I don't have a wandering monster right now. All right, it is now turned. So you take this, you shuffle it up, and you pick one. And I picked this one. Okay, so maybe my cleric will get a chance here. Uh, her, uh, her, his combat is 45. Now, you take the CS and you subtract off the two hit, which is minus 10. So the cleric has a 35% chance of hitting. So for one action, I will swing. I got an 84, I missed. I'm gonna swing again for my second action point. And I got a 37, close, but did not do it. All right, and then I forgot to put these over here. All right, so the cleric has gone. There better be four of these. One, two, three, four. Yeah, there are. All right, shuffle these up. Pick one. All right, I got one of mine. My wizard will shift over to the right, and she will cast Flare again. She is down to, from 77, she'll go down to 67. And again, I have to, <clears throat> I have to uh, cast my uh, arcane, which is 68, um, 68, so, and minus the flare cost of 10, so 58. And I, I did a 20, that is a hit with a spell. It is an automatic, uh, you know what, I don't even, it automatically hits, that's the casting part. Uh, it does 1d8 damage. So I will roll 1d8, I rolled two, it's got two damage on it. Uh, the way I will track that is I will put uh, a red die on it for two dice, two damage. And now we will pick another token. Me again. All right. What, uh, the fighter, one, two, three, four, will move up and swing. My fighter, ha my warrior, has a combat skill of 47. Minus 10 is 37, so he just gets one shot at this. I rolled a 27, uh, so it's a hit. He has a two uh, damage bonus, plus two damage, and his weapon, the battle hammer, does 1d10. So it's 1d10 plus two. I rolled a 10, 10, 12, 13, 14. Uh, it kills it, the bat is killed. All right, so everybody gets, it uh, looks like 10 XP. So I will write that down uh, somewhere. <laughs> Where do I write it down? I guess I'll just have to track it on something else. Um, so I will use my iPad to track that. And I'm just gonna, uh, for this first, or a quest, I'm just gonna keep track of the monsters killed. Quest, uh, Bat Swarm. And I got 10 XP. Now remember, everybody gets it. It's, it's just everybody across the board gets 10 XP that survived the counter. All right, so this is quest number one. All right, um, it says I get a part. What that means is a tr no treasure, but you roll to see what kind of part you get. And I cannot remember if that is a table or not, but let's look it up. This book does have a really good index. So, if you're not sure, parts, here we go, page 64. Let's see if it's a ch chart or table of some sort. Parts. Uh, well, page 64 does not say anything about parts. That's wrong. <laughs> okay, well, uh, let me double check one more time. Parts, did I look at the wrong page number? Parts, page 64, yeah, that's not right. So. Uh, I will figure that out later, but and I um, but I do get 10 XP, and I killed a bat swarm. Excellent. Okay, that is the end of the turn. Uh, we are out of combat. Um, I believe when combat ends, 
Uh, let's see, adjust bag with initiative tokens. Roll this. So at the start of every turn, I was supposed to roll a scenario die. So let's do that. Let's go over how that works. Because I, I forget that you do this every turn, at the start of every turn. So on page, on uh, I don't know what page it is. I'm going to use this. Combat turn. I did. I pulled an initiative token. Actually, that's not it. That is not the right table. Where is it? Okay. Come on. It's the start of a turn. All right, it must be in the book. I've got it in the book somewhere. Hero attacking combat turn. Pull initiative token. Okay, that's not it. Ugh. Sorry, guys. All right, here we go. Roll the scenario die, D10. Uh, what I'm looking for, oh, I did roll it on the first turn when they rolled in here. All right, so let's do it again. That's a three, which is move the heroes. Okay. What you don't want to roll is a 9 or 10. So, so I rolled it the first time. Then they moved in. I should have rolled it a second time, which I just did. And then it was the third turn. So this took three rounds to beat. So this third turn sequence, I rolled a dice, and I rolled a 9. Okay. So when I roll a 9, it says roll the threat. It's a d20. You have to, if you roll... Uh, um, if the party is not in a battle, well, I was in a battle. So if the party is in a battle, you roll on the threat table next page. Um, that's interesting. Threat decrease. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Um, so the threat roll, you roll a d20, and my threat is three. I don't. I do not want to roll below uh, oh, um, below three. I rolled a nat 20. Guess what? When you roll a nat 20, you lower the threat level by five. So my, my threat level goes all the way down to one. If it had been um, three or less, I would have rolled on this random threat table on page 89, but I did not have to do that. I lowered the threat level and now my heroes get to move. All right, so this is another turn, okay? We're not in combat. So my, my, uh, dwarf, my um, halfling will go one, two, three, four. Remember, they moved. They've all moved in this turn, and now he's gonna, he's gonna move again. Now, it said I could search. It said that I can search some of these things. Let's look it up. It says, uh, the weapons rack. There's a weapons rack in here. Apparently there's a weapons. Oh, there's a chest. Okay, I see that. The dead adventurer. Oh, dead adventurer. And the weapons rack. Where is the weapons rack? I don't see a weapons rack. I see a table. I see a table. See two chairs. That's weird. The weapons rack, dead adventure, and chest. Where's the weapons rack? I don't see it. So, or is that it? That's a lantern. This is really odd. Okay. Well, there's a chest, and there is an, a body that I can check. All right. So we will do that. Um. She will move, the, the halfling will go one, two, three, four, next to the adventurer. And that is the end of a turn. So I'll pick these up. And now it's the start of a turn. We're not in combat. So we roll the scenario die. And remember, I'm, I don't want nines or tens. I rolled a four, so all's good. So they can move again. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Um, what do we want to do? Well, let's go ahead and have the halfling search the body. Uh, can be searched. So when you search something, does that... Let me see. Search. Page 97. All right. Searching corpses. Uh, you can only search corpses that are adjacent. I am adjacent. Uh, searching a corpse and, uh, takes one action point. All right, so for the first action point, I will 
search the corpse. So what does that mean? Once you defeat an enemy, you search the corpse of the enemy. Well, it wasn't an enemy. Simply roll for loot from each defeated enemy and divide it. So I'm not quite sure how to do that. I can, it's, it shows how to search furniture. There is a furniture table somewhere. And uh, searching for a room. Let me, let me look and see what I can find here. Here we go. Black levers, these levers. Um, I know that I saw a search table in the appendix for, for like, uh, searching things. So let's see. Maybe there's a corpse one there. Um, talents, appendix, okay, miscellaneous, spells. Here we go. Uh, treasure found in furniture. Treasure found in rooms. Check the tables on the falling back for treasure. I'm searching a corpse. So it doesn't really... It doesn't tell me what table to roll on for the corpse. All right, the chest... It says I can search the chest. Now, do I have to see if it's locked? I think you do. I think you still roll on that open, open chest thing. And again... I'm going to rely on some of y'all to tell me if I'm making mistakes here. Opening a door or chest. So, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I'll just go ahead and move her all the way up to the chest, and on her next turn, she can search the chest. All right, um, let's go. I'm going to move my, my fighter, one, two, to the door. Uh, the wizard is going to go... Well, hold on. The, the priest will go one, two, three, four. And you know what? I'll just call it a table one for now. Uh, that's the lowest tier table I can roll on. So for a T1, for a T1 um, chart, I don't know where that would be. Come on, find it. Equipment. Consumables, tools, no. It may not be one of the tables. It doesn't look like it's in the cheat sheet book. It is not. Nope. All right, so uh, it's on page 194. We'll just do a T1 table. That's the lowest one. You roll a D10. I rolled a 6, which is nothing but scrap. All right, so she searched... That and then finally, the wizard he will move up here, and then the wizard will go one, two, three, four, five, six, get in the corner just in case there's an encounter, and sh her turn is over. All right, I'm gonna stop using these tokens and speed things up a little bit. So now it's another turn. I roll a d10, hoping for nothing, it, nothing happens, and they can go again. So my halfling will now do a open chest, uh, the open of, of a door or chest. Roll a d6 and a d10. Uh, here's a d10, here's a d6. Raise the threat level by one. Okay, the threat level is now up to two. Roll a d6 and a d5. All right, so I rolled a two on the d6 and a seven on the d10. On the d6, I rolled a two. It's not trapped. The d10 is a seven. It's locked. How do you, so I can pick the lock again. It's a 50% chance, so I'll roll for 50. I remember that. And by the way, this is the, if you, I think if you're successful, you don't break the pick lock. So I've still got two. I rolled a 14, so I opened the trap. I picked it. It was a chest. Roll for treasure. Okay. So where do you do that? Let's see. Treasure on a chest. Um, that's in a quarter... Treasure found in furniture. Well, where is the treasure found in a chest? Here we go. Chest. Uh, 1d10. This is on page 192 if you want to follow along. I rolled a 4. A chest with a 4 is two fine treasures. This is very cool, but this is the end of the video. I keep these under 30 minutes, but I promise the next video will follow this one. You won't have to wait. This is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. Let me wrap up this video, and in the next one, we'll pick up right where we left off. Until then, everybody, take care. Check out the new RPG and Wargame newsletter. 
Each week, the Tabletop Engineer shares news, products, Kickstarters, and much more related to the gaming hobby. It's free to subscribe, so check out the link in the video description below to sign up.